Wouldn't it be great to be a little bit more flexible when you want to trigger clips or clip slots in Ableton Live Session View via a MIDI controller? And if you don't want to lose a mapping, well, if you make a mapping, you're losing the button to trigger other things in Ableton Live because you can't have flexible and dynamic MIDI mappings in Ableton Live here. I have quite some a uh, collection of Max for Live devices for different uh, hardware here, but I added this one function over another device and those devices can be used straight away. So if you want flexible and dynamic MIDI mappings for clips, please watch this video. So it is actually quite easy. We are talking about Max for Live devices here. So Max for Live is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. This will work in Ableton Live Suite 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so let's have a look. We have those two different devices here because we have one family of devices here or one collection of devices here for clip slots and one for clips. So there is a difference. This will make sense in a second. Let's start with the slot mapping here. So we just want to map a slot. So let's say we want to map this slot here. So if we go to our MIDI track where we have the Max for Life sitting on, we just hit map slot and now the selection jumps to the master track. Don't worry why, just select the track. First you want, you got the slot on, you want to map and then select the slot you want to map and you're done. So if you're going back now to the track where you got your devices sitting on, you will see that the name will display or the, the uh, window here will display to MIDI, which is the track name here and the slot number from the top, it would be number 10 counting down. So um, this is now mapped here. And if I hit trigger, you can see that this slot here is being triggered. So if we have a MIDI clip on here, for example, this will now play. Or if we have a empty clip slot here where we want to record something in. So if we just set up some input here just for now. So if I now hit the trigger button here, you can see this slot is recording and I can re-trigger the slot here as well. So um, the same or very similar function here works for the clip map clip stuff here. Why is there a difference for the um, clips here? So for example, if I now change um, more tracks, have more tracks here. So now um, when I'm triggering this, you can still see it's recording in the track and in the clip slot we mapped here. But obviously the name changed because this is not anymore to MIDI. This is now changed to four MIDI because I added more tracks here. So what I can do now is I can refresh and it will recall the current or the change name of the track. Or if you add more scenes and the clip slot number went further down or further up, it will update this here as well. So you will always know which um, clip slot is triggered on here. Okay, so before I explain why this technique is so useful and in combination with other devices of mine, first want to show you how the whole thing works for clips if you want certain clips to, tr to be triggered. So you hit the map clip and then you select the clip straight away. So you don't go to the track selection first and then the clip slot selection. You just select the clip straight away and we can see it's now being mapped to this clip. And the difference here is to the clip slot device, you might wanna move this clip, you know? So if you're moving this clip now, it will stay and it will follow this clip. It's bind to this clip now. So if I trigger this, if I hit trigger, it's triggering this clip and the same um, works if, for example, if this clip is sitting somewhere completely else on a different track, it's still, and you can see that now, if I hit trigger, it's still triggering this clip 
no matter where it is sitting. Obviously, if you delete this clip, the whole mapping doesn't work anymore, anymore because there is no clip. Okay, so you can obviously clear this mapping or you can make a new mapping. And if you change the name, let's quickly do this. Another name. Obviously, the clip name is changed now, but it's still displaying the old or the, the name when you mapped it. You hit refresh, R for refresh, and the name is being updated. So you might think now, well, but Toby, we have the Ableton Live MIDI mapping, the default MIDI mapping here, and I can just select my MIDI controller here, go to the clip and make a mapping mapping there. Yeah, you can do that and it's nothing wrong with that. But now this MIDI note here, so for um, this example here now, yeah, it's all mapped, but you can't use this button anymore for other mappings in Ableton Live, which you can do if you do this via those devices here, because you can automate those devices on and off. Uh, you can have stacks of those devices and you can actually let me delete this MIDI mapping here so I'm not getting confused. So you can have um, more flexible MIDI mapping here. And as well, if you use this in conjunction with my um, other devices, which for example is the advanced MIDI mapping buttons device here. So this is a device where you can set up um, a lot of mappings and this cable is too short. Now it works so I can set up those buttons here to um, be listened to inside this device. So I just set this up for the first two so you can see those buttons are being um, controlling and being pressed down and I can now map different action to those buttons. So for example, I can map those to different locators, to different scenes, to different um, scene navigation, to tap, metronome, uh, transport on off. So starting uh, the transport on off and I can then change and go to a different preset. So if I, for example, want the first button to do um, let's say tapping the tempo, I hit S and now this button will tap the tempo as we can see up here. Uh, but now if I go to a different preset, I can assign something completely different to this button. So for example, I want to set the transport on and off so Ableton Live's start and stop button and we can see here now the starting and stopping of Ableton Live is now being controlled via this button. If I go to my preset I set up before, um, the same button is now controlling tapping the tempo. So um, I have quite a few of those devices for uh, button control but for um, fader and um, dial control here as well. So if you want to set up s different things for those as well, that's possible as well. Um, I have one here for the FCB 1010, which is a MIDI foot controller, which you can use here as well. Um, same like you have different presets to set up different things. So that was kind of like a little detour now to explain you what you can do here. So for example, if I set up now a map function here, um, map parameter, I can now go to my launch clip stuff here and set this up to be um, the triggering clip here. So now I have used one device, which is the advanced MIDI control buttons to be mapped to a certain parameter and I can now use the launch clip or the launch clip slot devices which are linked in the video description. All devices are linked in the video description actually here. So this is one way on how you can um, do some more flexible MIDI controls here and just to add this function for um, triggering clips and clip slots. Those devices are needed currently for my FCB 1010 or for the different uh, foot control devices I got in here. 
but you can use um, MIDI controllers already and you can send in MIDI controls via MIDI notes and not MIDI mappings here now as well. So if we go to the devices, we want this action we mapped here, which is a um, slot trigger. We want this to listen to an incoming MIDI note. So what you can do here as well. So for example, I have my APD MK2 here which is running straight into this track here and I can turn on a note mapping here and I can hit S, it's sync for waiting for note pitch to come in and if my monitor is set to in, the MIDI will be routed to that device. I hit this pad and now this MIDI note pitch which is being sent by this MIDI controller by this pad here is triggering this launch clip slot action I set up here. So bam, this is now, and you can see this up here, triggering that thing here. Again, this is a little bit advanced because you could map this directly, but then you would lose this MIDI note here. You're sending this button here for other things, controlling other things. But if I now just turn this device on or off, automate this, I could have quite a lot of presets being set up and just being controlled via this one device. And if this device is turned on or off, depending on what actions I want to trigger, I can actually set up some more controls here. Again, the, probably the advanced MIDI um, device button device here is a bit easier to understand if you want to go into having different um, actions being triggered via the same button or buttons. Um, so have a look, there's a video link, there's a link in the video description here. And just to show you the launch clip, launch clip slot trigger devices and launch clip devices, they are coming in different, um, different, um, how do you say, different versions here. So we have the launch clip slot trigger for one, for five, or even for 10. So you can set up up to 10 uh, different uh, clip slots, which should be triggered here. And then just turn this device off if you don't want this mapping to happen or turn it on again. Um, if you want this to happen, automate those. And the same goes for the launch clip devices here. We have a one device like for one, for five and for 10, which um, is all included in this one pack. So you get those six devices here. Just follow the link in the video description. And again, as I mentioned, we have or you can get the FCB or uh, some MIDI foot control devices here, which I will link in the video description as well. And one which I, I'm a little bit proud of because you have so many different actions here. You can actually trigger with one button and you can set up up to 128 presets here. So you can trigger 128 presets with one or things with one button and just quickly set up presets here. It's much easier to automate um, this via um, this button, advanced button control device here. Obviously, it's a little bit of a learning curve to understand this. So um, if that excites you, um, you got two options here. F one option is um, just follow the link to get the launch clip and launch clip slot devices uh, and have a look on the other link here to the button control, advanced button control devices to another video of mine where I'm explaining this a little bit more in detail how this works and how to set up your MIDI controller to be much more flexible and ever advanced and control, have dynamic control settings here and even for some functions setting up global presets you can, so you can um, have some things like um, tap metronome uh, metronome on and off transport on and off record overdub midi etc those functions can be set globally which means you can actually store and recall presets for your midi controller across Ableton live sets and you don't have to set up mappings 
every time again. So um, have a look in the video links, in the links of this video description here, if that excites you and take care. Bye bye.